It's nine ten. Yeah, we're having a problem with the figures, kind of different interpretations of what it is. Different interpretations, you think? I like the question. Yeah. I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think they listen either. Ooh, tomato. Yeah. tomato. <laughs> That's definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. All right. Yeah. Number 10 said refer to figure one, two. Nine, one, two, right? You're right, one. So you got to go search the book for mm -hmm. nine, one, two. Mm -hmm. You're wrong in the first place. One, you ruin our day. All right, Where is it? There it is. Nine, one, two. That one. That's a chill. Oh. <laughs> that's, Ooh, yeah. that's the crazy Ooh. this thing the thing some can't months. figure out yeah 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 details it's the details right how many you can see it now yeah yeah that one Ooh. yeah how many areas are going to share off Ooh. two areas so oh, no. It is P over A, but it's two times A. Hey, can you show me the homeworks from last Thursday? So which includes this one? Can I show it to you? Yeah, like on one screen, so I can picture that as well. Well, let's do that like after. Okay, sure. Really got an hour. Yeah. Let's. And I don't. I don't think I'm going to take the full hour. So then we can do all your photographic cool. that we need to do. All right. Some more questions on this one, or does that solve the problem? You're happy. P over A. So All right, what else? What were the other ones we did? And what was that one? 11 and 15. 11, compute the force required punch. Compute the force required to punch one inch diameter hole through a half inch thick boilerplate. Ultimate shear strength. So anytime they give you ultimate, that's failure. That means rupture. Okay. So that's why it's such a high number, 42,000. Um, yeah. So you set that up the same as we know stress is P over A, right? Oh, we're doing shear stress. I should use the right symbol. P over A. And they give you ultimate of how much? 42,000 PSI. Yeah. So that's this. That's the limit. That's when it will fail. Right? So anytime, go ahead. So um, now that you erase it and put that to what? Tau. I think it's tau. It's a T. Yeah, Greek tau. letter T is tau. So if you use sigma and on the right bottom, you put that. Uh, that T, that would be a, a, a shear uh, threat, threat, right? This one? No, no, no. Yeah, uh, yes, like that. But on, on the on the sigma, on the sigma, you can put that the T on the right bottom. That would represent. Oh, to solve, yeah. That would so represent. I did, yes, I just wrote. I'm just wrote the equation this way first. But if we want to know force P, right? That this problem wants to know how much force it would take to punch through it. So we would solve the equation for P equals, is that what you're talking about? No, 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 no. Sigma and then, uh, yeah, T uh, uh, right there, T. Tensile stress. No, for shear, the signal is shear. Shear stress. I don't know what you want, man. No, no, I was asking if it was right. No, I wouldn't put anything. So okay, this so, means okay. shear stress. All right, so I don't have to put any subscript on it. Okay. All right, cool. Very good. And what's the area? On this one, the area is this ring that's going to fail, right? It's this thing. Right there, all the way around. That when you punch through a plate, that's what's going to fail. So we talked about in class circumference equals two pi r. So they gave us the diameter of one, right? So the radius is a half inch. So we do that two pi r. That's just the length, and we multiply by the thickness of the plate because it's got to go through that whole thickness. Yeah. 
So the area in this problem is going to be 2 pi 0.5 inches. And so that's the circumference. And what was the thickness? How thick is our boiler plate? Half inch. Half inch thick, 0.5. So that's the area. It has to be sheared off. This ring. Yeah, what did we get for P? Six. Times this area, right? What'd you get for P? I got 66,000 pounds. 66, I was gonna say, it must, it's bigger than 66. Yeah. <laughs> so 66,000 pounds. That's the answer from the book, but the actual numbers is 65,973 pounds, 0.45. Yeah, they round. I they definitely round. The book says something different. No, well, is that 66,000? Like yeah. It says uh, thing with pi diameter. Six. Yeah, so that's just, instead of using the radius, you can use, like, the diameter, right? So that'll be just a slightly different equation. It's like area. It can be pi r squared, or it can be pi d squared over four. So they have multiple equations for multiple variables. I'm lucky to remember one of them. So I use the one I remember, two pi r. Sweet. Love it. You do not use the yield here. You gotta use the ultimate. Okay, yield the punch would just hit it and like dent it. <laughs> it wouldn't punch through it. So we've got to use the ultimate or the failure stress. Good. 15 was the other one. Is that right? Yeah. Short compressive member, that one. Two by two in cross section, eight inches long, subject to 40,000 pounds compressive load. As a result, the length of the member is shortened to 7.85. Oh, so it started at eight. Yeah. What is the shape of this thing? Do we know? Oh, two by two. Two by two, eight inches long. And how much load? 40,000. And then it gets shortened to 7.85. Compute the strain in the member. Ooh, ooh, I like it. So strain was this thing, epsilon. What did it equal? Delta. Delta over L, and what's delta? Deformation, how much it changes in length. So that's the difference between the eight and the 7.85. So strain is going to be, what is that? 0 0.18, 15? 0 0.15 inches. And what's the original length? Eight inches. What'd you get for strain? 0 0.01875. 0 0.01875. Yeah? Yeah. What, here's the trick question of the day. What are the units of strain? Thousands of an inch. Huh? Thousands of an inch. Eh, careful. What are the units of strain? There should be. There is no unit for strain. But, and here's the big but, we refer to strain as inches per inch. Is that not weird? What it is, it's the amount of change per unit length. So it's really important that you kind of get this. It's 0 0.01875 inches in every inch. It changes that much in every inch. So strain, yeah, I know, it's weird, but we refer to strain as per unit length. So if you have eight inches, you're gonna get, yeah, you're gonna get eight of these for the total elongation. If you take eight times this, you better get 0.15, and you would. 
right? So it is unitless if you use strain in another equation that has no unit, but we do refer to it as inches per inch or millimeters per millimeter of change, because it is telling you how much change per unit, right? Per unit length. So inches per inch. It's a bizarre thing of the day. Outstanding. Besides the fire drill? Besides the fire drill in the flipping foreign rain. Gina, you missed that. So you can stand in the rain for, well, you're probably in the rain playing softball, so whatever. That makes up for it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let her off today, yeah. right? All right. Good. Turn them in. Let's make a pile. And pick up your old ones. There. It's the lonely walk to the front of the room. Oh, yeah. Okay. The walk of shame. You didn't even get wet. You didn't go. I, you you I, could have burned out. This this jacket is like really water is boom. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It was I yeah, I saw it. You're lucky that there wasn't a real fire because you could have burned out. Dude, I got it like an umbrella on my head. All right. All right, you have more homework in chapter nine. We're that does chapter nine. The only thing we didn't cover is the modulus of rigidity, and I'll show you that right now. We did cover the modulus of elasticity. But we haven't really worked with it a lot. Can you remember what that was? Modulus of elasticity. Big E. Big E, correct. And what's it equal? Stress over strain. So fundamental. Like, if you come across any engineer at a party, you can just say, yo, modulus elasticity, stress over strain, and they'll be super impressed. Sure, that'll work. <laughs> I don't think they'll find an engineer at a party. No? Well, unless it's an engineering party of some kind. All right, stress over strain. So it had to do with this graph that I talked about briefly that we're going to talk about a lot more because that's chapter 10. Chapter 10 is all about material properties. So we'll do a little, uh, a little walk down memory lane first because I'm going to quiz you on a few things. This is a really... Good uh, midterm exam questions that you'll get. Uh, area. Is that a material property or is that a property of shape? Wait, property of shape is property of shape is volume. Right? Could be volume, but I said area. So what is area? Is it a property of material or a property of shape? shape. Definitely of the shape. Exactly. All right. What about area moment of inertia? Property of material or of the shape? Material. Definitely of the shape. Oh. Definitely <laughs> of the shape. Right? If I gave you this and said, what's the area moment of inertia? You could give it to me, right? You, you could calculate it. Right, Nick? Nick's, Nick's like, Ready to? He wants to take this to the committee. Take, he wants to raise it to the Supreme Court. I believe you. I know you do. This proves it right here, Nick. You could calculate the area moment of inertia of this shape. Yes. Without knowing what yeah. the material is, right? Yeah. Like I could say it's wood, or I could say it's steel, or I could say it's aluminum. It's going to have that same area moment of inertia. All right. Very good. And then I could add things like the radius and other shape things, right? So those are all properties of shape. Now we have properties. These are all shape material. So yield stress, that's a property of the material. Each material has its own specific yield stress. That's my sigma. That's a y yield stress, okay? Uh, I could write ultimate stress. Any stresses are gonna be a property of material, very based on the material. And then E, Young's modulus, property of material. 
So when you're given the material, you are given a lot of information. We just don't know it all yet or how to use it. Poisson's ratio. We're going to get to Poisson's ratio. That's a mu. I really am bad at mu's. So they get really sloppy. That's really sloppy. Put two tails on you. That's how I do you. That's Poisson's ratio. That has to do with how much a cross section shrinks when we stretch it, but we haven't done it yet, right? Um, there is alpha. That's the thermal coefficient of expansion. That's a property of the material. Aluminum has a different coefficient of expansion than steel, than titanium, than all the different material. Wood, they're all different. Okay, material property. All of these are in the back of the book and there's actually probably more. So, so try to separate what are properties of the material or what's the property of the shape when we use them, okay? When you're given the material, you're given all these things. If you know the material, you know a lot of things. So it can send you in a lot of different directions for a lot of different equations. All right, how do we get all this? We get it through testing. Chapter 10 is all about that test. So it's kind of a thick chapter for this class. We are all into calculating everything. And this chapter is just into reading, really. A lot of reading in this chapter. So I encourage you to read through it. Um, there is good information. It starts with the tensile test. That is a tensile test. It's a very basic crude one that doesn't work anymore, but we can still break stuff, so that's fun, right? But there's got a gauge on there to try and give us load. That doesn't work, anymore, unfortunately, because that was cool when we could get load, but the problem is it moves through the curves so fast that our graphs really were poor when we tried to create the waves. So, but what it is, what you do with it, is you take a test piece, I don't know what that material is. But there are materials we can't break. <laughs> so we'll just see what it does. Uh, you take a test piece and you load it. So a test piece typically looks like this for us. It looks like this for bigger tensometers or tensile test machines, right? But typically, you know everything about it. You know its diameter, right? You know its length before you put it in. So then you can get some for before and after measurements. Right, And what we do is we pull on it. So this will go in and we'll pull on it. And we measure as we go and it generates this kind of curve. If it's mild steel, it generates this kind of curve. This is a blow up of this. This is the entire curve, right? So what happens is, you know, when you pump the hydraulic jack, it puts a load on it and it stretches. And that's this region, this straight line region. So I'll probably, I don't know if they give us a better curve. Eh. Oh, this is a better one. Way better. Hello, Samuel. You missed the fire drill, so you got to go stand in the rain. Just kidding. You don't have to do that. All right. So when you first pump on it, it comes up to a load. Remember, stress is basically P over A load over area, the area doesn't change, the load goes up, makes stress, right? So pump on it once, it's right here. Pump on it again, it's right here. It's moving up this straight line region. We pump on it once and when we take the load off of it, it goes back to its original shape. It's elastic in the beginning, right? Pump on it the third time, gets right up here to what we call the elastic limit. That's about how fast this goes, unfortunately. Be nice to, you know, to have 10 pumps between here and here. We don't get that. It just goes really quick. Puts a big load on it fast. Okay. At the elastic limit, we can pump a little more and we get a whole bunch more deformation. So this way is deformation strain. That's the change. Right. And here, actually, in this region right here, the load stays the same. And it actually stretches on its own under the same load. It just goes until it stops. And then this region right here is called strain hardening. 
So at that point, the material has changed. I tried to grab, it's just very hard to see, so I don't know that you'll be able to see this. But I tried to grab one that was broke. Uh, well, you can see it in tight. One that's broke and one that's not broke. And you can see, it's called, you see it right here? Yeah. It's called fish scaling. Yeah, no, that's necking, not the necking. Look at the surface. See how the surface is shiny? And then what, right here, it changes, the surface that texture actually changes. It's called fish scaling. And that's strain hardening. That means the material, the molecular construction of the material is actually changing. It's no longer aluminum or whatever it used to be. It's something harder now, but it's more brittle, harder, more brittle, right? But strain hardening is great because it like got stronger. Yeah, so it sort of just rips it apart just a little bit. Between the little yeah, it just starts the necking that you see. This is called necking. That is like really right before fill, just incredibly close to failure. And it's very hard. I like to try and stop it as soon as we see necking. Most of the time I'm gonna and it blows up on us. So we'll see what we do. We can pull this one though. I know we can break this one. This one might be of a material that we can't break. What material would that be? Yeah, we have some titanium samples and that might be why this one is still here and not broken. Because <laughs> that thing won't break it. And a little stretch. Titanium? Nah, titanium doesn't stretch. Titanium goes straight line. So this is steel, right? This is mild steel, gives us this beautiful graph. Titanium does this. I can draw you the titanium graph. It's very steep, like that, and then it blows up. Yeah. So there's no indication of failure, none. It's really a fantastic material, but this just doesn't give you any elasticity, no indication of failure, no deformation, and then it just blows up. Bad news. Bad news, bad news, all right? Then it goes through this strain hardening region, and then it curls over and fails. That's fair. Does that curl over where it starts to bottom? Down? Yeah, necks out. So right here, no additional load is put on. And actually, load falls. <laughs> it can hold less and less. Just, you know, if we could watch it in slow motion, we would see it stretching, we'd see the load coming down, and then... Oh, yeah, the but it's, be it's because of the neck. Right, so it, as it necks, the cross-sectional area is getting smaller, which is intensifying the stress, right? Because as area gets smaller, we get more stresses. So the more stress, so, the more it necks, uh, the less pressure. Yeah, pressure. it's a bad, it, this whole this whole region is a very bad place to be. Mm -hmm. we, we don't design anywhere out there in that region. We only design in this region. And then we always use a factor of safety to be really designing down in this region. So if something goes wrong, we may bump up to here, but nothing should send us out here or we just really fail at our job. So, or a plane flew into the building or a barge hit the bridge, right? Which was never the design. All right, cool. That's the stress strain curve. That's where we get E. E is the relationship of this straight line, stress over strain in the elastic region. Just the straight line. All right, so I think we should pull one. What do you think? Sure, let's do it. We have a, we don't have a handle. The handle's missing, so we have to use a screwdriver. We're gonna pull the. I know, it's cheesy. I have like five handles at home. But there are no. Let's not pull this thing. This might be mild steel. All right, I'm gonna kind of show you some things on. The overhead again for folks that aren't here because we are going to put a tensometer on it so that's this unit so it goes on you can see inside there are some spikes see those little clampy deals so you close it all the way it's got the craziest gauge i mean absolute craziest gauge uh, but we would zero it and then as it go, so I'm good with the gauge, like to right there. 
right? It makes sense. But then check what it does. It starts counting down numbers. It's like, wow, that's so weird, I think. Because now you really can't read it because it's gone from here. Yeah, it's like a crazy gauge. But you can figure out because of the smaller numbers, like how many rotations, see how that goes around. So you can figure out the beginning part, but then as soon as the reduction in area happens, this thing falls off, right? Because it no longer can clamp onto this diameter, all right? All right, so let's just play with this a little bit. You can write down the diameter of this piece. Oh, zero it. It's zeroed. Everyone know how to read one of these? I mean, I know how, I have a I have a digital calendar. Knows. Digital? <laughs> yeah. Who likes digital calendars? <laughs> Not me. So how do we read that? <laughs> yeah, so the one inch hasn't showed up, so we're definitely at point two. And then you just read the dial. So it's point two four. Two or one. Two, four, two. Yeah, so that's our diameter of our piece. And I'm going to, right? This is what it looks like, but I'm gonna pass it around. I'm gonna pass two of them around. We're gonna pull the lighter color one. I'm trying not to tell you what I think it is, but you can see maybe, and you can maybe kind of get a feel for what it is. Try it. guys have been like All right. Densometer is over there. It's like a All right. So then you pick up you make We buy them because they will make them for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's, to get them to, oh, this is being recorded, so. Yeah, they're just very busy down there. Oh, hey. Bandit. Hey, hey, that one can't be bandit, okay? Maximum. All right, what do you think the lighter color one is? Oh, All right, if we think it's aluminum, let's calculate how much load it would take to break that. How much load would it take if we think it's aluminum? What's the diameter? 0. 0.242. 0. 0.242. And what is the ultimate strength of aluminum? 0. I don't even know. But how do we find out? Uh, yeah, back of the book. 240, 40 yields. We don't want yield. We want a failure, which is ultimate. So, Do they give it to? That's how it's so it's we only have this aluminum 6061, right? And what's it give us for tensile ultimate? 38. So now you know 38,000 is the breaking stress. You know the diameter, how much load would it take? Huh? 0. 0.242. 0. 0. 0.242. All right. So 38,000. 5.242 squared. Yep, I agree. One seven four seven. So, if that's a two ton jack, which I'm pretty sure it's bigger than a two ton jack, uh, that should do it, right? Two tons is what? Oh, Yeah, four thousand pounds. Thousand pounds per ton. Two thousand pounds. Two thousand pounds per ton. How many pounds in a ton? Two thousand. That's 
So if it's a two ton jack, that's four thousand. I'm pretty sure it's a two ton or bigger. So we should be able to break it, right? What's the ultimate strength of? Where's the other one at? Where are the test pieces? Oh, right there. What's the ultimate strength of like mild steel? This is this other one is mild steel. It's 58,000? 58, yeah. Yeah. So would we be able to break that? So we think we can break this one. Yeah, honey, how'd you guys find out if it's, because there's like four different kinds of steels over the here. The top one is mild steel, A36. Oh, okay. Yep. Good question. Uh, yeah, 58,000. If it's a two-ton jig, yeah. How much load required? Uh, 2,667. Okay. So we'll try both of them. Why not, uh, why not bust a lot of stuff, right? All right. Woo. Kind of a long distance for you, but it is what it is. We'll do the lighter one first. I got 11. <laughs> you got 11. What? 11,000. What did I do wrong? I don't know. Um, something. something. What I did was I did decrease the, the process here. I want to find the ultimate strength by the uh, pi r squared divided by 4. I don't know how, but this is what I got. I don't know. Wait, how did you I did that? Turn that it's the same thing as if I just flipped out. Oh, I don't know what I did. What I did is I did uh, this separately, and then I just multiplied it by the pressure plus, which is just supposed to be like. I get the P uh, separate. Uh, 2667. All right, that's what's about. So we got some oil in it. Oh, there we go. That's what I just did. It was looking a little that way. Six, six, seven. So this is also a great problem for calculating uh, <laughs> stresses on threads, right? Because these are just threaded connections. So how can the threaded connection be stronger? The threaded connection is stronger than that cross section. Not possible. Awesome. Yeah. There you go. I got two thousand. Nice. Any ideas how that's possible? Threaded connection is stronger than that. What fails is that cross-sectional area, right? The threaded connection doesn't. These threaded bolts, they don't fail. Not thicker. Sure. More area. Got to be more area than that cross-sectional area in the threads. So if I only engage two threads at the top and two threads at the bottom, what would fail then? Probably the thread, right? So you want to engage the full threads for it to break the cross section, or you can mess with, oh, how many threads would it, you know, how many would shear off? But once you do that, then your test piece is broken. So, all right, so it's loaded. I didn't put the tensometer on. It's not data we can use. Anymore. I think I spent my screw that. It's pretty hard to get through. So it's, it's just like loaded. Oops, sideways. Yeah, so when you start pumping it, it like loads it immediately. So there's just no slow way to load it. Um, I don't know if this screwdriver can work. That's the one. You can, you can go up and check it out. I don't think there's any 
Can you use the handle of the, the plug? No, it doesn't open the front, but I'm going to blend. Oh, yeah. I was thinking like, <laughs> yeah, is that D? Yeah. Or use one of those other uh, bars of uh, the wild steel, just I'm not sure. See which one would break first. <laughs> So, come up, come closer. So when it blows up, it's better. So what we're looking for is necking, right? And if somebody would like to pump, anyone want to pump? Never. Go ahead. Me? Yeah. Well, because you're bigger and you can apply more torque. So raise it up and go slow. Just go try and get just a little. And forward, yeah. Now back up and see if you can see any neck. Anything? Yeah. Now, if it's aluminum, it has pretty good elasticity. What's it feel like, Samuel? You feel it stretchy? No? Yeah. I can see it. It's like four pumping. Okay, stop then. You think you can see it? You can see it on your shoulder. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what it's doing is it's looking for the, the first imperfection in the material it could be a, just a little air pocket it could be just some kind of very small imperfection mm -hmm. right trying to give it just a little try and make it a nice neck in the future you can slide that rod out of ways and give yourself a little more a little, a little more moment necking Anyone see it? The other thing you're looking for is fish scale. Like when it when it right before it's gonna fail, it'll have that surface texture will change. Probably copper dry. Copper dry. Yeah. It's getting hard to do. It's getting easier. It's get it gets easier as it gets closer to failing because now you've come over. Right, that's curled over. Are you are you familiar with the process? HIV. Which is my We do that a lot of our parts. Let me see. Anything? I can see the thread that lie on the top. But it's not the uh, I'm probably blind, but I'll see nothing. <laughs> what? I keep thinking I see something right there about half three quarters of an inch down, but I don't see much. Oh, well, you're going to keep going. You're going to stand me up on there. I don't know why. It's just Ooh, it looks like it's getting easier. It feels like the stress is applied to everyone. It is. That it's going to be throughout the entire thing until it finally it's oh, okay. we go over there. It's like that. Is it hot? No. Is it hot? No. Yeah, I'll take it. Yes. Oh, dude, that's good. Oh, yeah. If there's nothing. I mean, it's just okay. going I like, guess it's a little rough when like where you can see all these little stretch and yeah, just um, that's the slow one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. All right, well, let's do the other one. See if we can. See where's that at? Which one was this one? The one? Let's do that one more. Uh, where's the other, where's the other test piece? Anyone got it? Yeah, 
What do I do with it? It's right here. Oh, here it is. Oh, the piece. Especially on the hardware. But don't put that, don't bury it in there because you don't get any leverage. But also, don't be right on the edge of your, you're going to lose a couple of Those are of less problems. All right, so you got to tell us what you're feeling as you go through this process. Nothing. I feel like Yeah, the recent five minutes slides have brought out a little bit more happy. So, the effects of a material. What that one feel like? Beautiful body like that. It's just hard, hard. Same. Well, it's really nice. Do you feel it getting easier at all when we're stopping through the hard part? So, go hard, same, same load. I don't have a friend that would medically just go. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's look at it. Anything? Oh. Here, I'll have to do it super hard while well, I was putting the torch in the field. I don't know why you wouldn't me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hold it up. Hold it up. Hold it up. I don't know, guys. Can we do it? Well, I think you can do it, but I'm wondering what's going to fail. <laughs> the titanium doesn't fail. Okay. I don't know. You we did have some it. titanium pieces. I honestly don't. Know. What is this metal? They all got the next step. This? Yeah. Well, this is mild steel, probably, but it's a, it's a lot more cross So I'm not so worried about that. We're not that. worried about that. No, I think I can take mild steel. Yeah, he's a strong one. way to find out. Okay, I looked for nephew then. Our surface chain. About an inch down from the top. So the the on there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now I want to get in close. I can oh. smack it. What are you feeling, Adam? Oh, stop. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, oh snap. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Yeah. You see, we yeah, yeah, almost you could almost just let that sit and it might just go yeah. on its own because the load actually could be decreasing because it's a hydraulic jack, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. stretching and that could just blow up right in Samuel's phone, right? Okay. <laughs> That'd be super nice start. Let's play roulette, everyone one by one, smack it with this one. Time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, if you tap it like. It could go. Hold on. That's what super, are the odds? Super close. That's what are the oh, super close? I like my odds. 
Did you feel it? <laughs> when you're pumping? Not really. Not really. Well, I gotta really see it. Okay. Yeah, tap it. Well, you gotta need that. Give us all. That's like all right, pull it down. Yeah, see if you can like improve that. Look at the room, though. It's so good if you can see them. Ah, yeah, it's not good. It looks better like it's that. Broke. It's gonna go on its own. Well, you see, you never catch it before. It yeah, like breaks. You never catch it again. It's pretty rare. Yeah, we gotta work to show this. It's like it's like it's like playing a horror game. Like you're just waiting for it to happen. Yo, I think Mr. Chin is word out. Oh my gosh, dude, it is getting a little. It's like rubber. What if we just leave and take it out and put it on the ground? Like so that shelf is like moving. Extend it Right. No, everyone has to get up to it. And oh God, God. Like that. That, See, that is actually like super. Oh, no. oh, no. So, are you seeing this? Oh, yeah. That's one That's of the great. best neckings oh, I've ever seen. It's really good. It's definitely mild steel. Oh. Having that stretchability. Oh. Boom. Oh, and once you go, it goes. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Look out. Dude, look. Look at that. Dude. It's obedient. Yeah. Yep. That's actually that so a lot. That's really good. That's what it's putting right out of it. Oh, no. Super good. Awesome. All, All right. right. Nice, nice job. Why? We oh, so are here. Jack, let's get some. Bring that piece over here. I'll put it on the camera. Okay. Hi, Vicky. Wow. Yeah, we sh we should be done. We we are done, but you know we got into something. So. So there it is. That's pretty good, guys. Nice job, Devin. That is substantial necking. I don't know what I did, but I think I did. No, the aluminum did neck as well. All right, we are done. Nice job, everybody. You got some homeworks. Uh, she's not now. Huh?